I'm Mike Bithell, and me and my mates created Thomas Was Alone. Thomas Was Alone is a puzzle platformer where you move through a level as a bunch of different characters, making them work together and find a solution and get to the exit. The game started uh, as a conversation between uh, me and my longtime collaborator, Daz Watford. We were watching Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? of all movies, uh, the George Clooney film, and we were thinking about the idea of characters who were physically tied together and how much gameplay you could get out of that as an idea. Uh, so I started building a prototype of that, but then I realized that chains or ropes are actually really hard to make. So what I did was I just never bothered to put that in, and I made it so one of the characters could jump higher. And in that moment when we had those two characters and I started building puzzles around two characters where one could jump higher, realized that actually there was a game in that. And if we expanded it and did multiple different characters with multiple different abilities, we could actually build a game out of that. So it was kind of an accidental surprise on the way to a different game. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. With the visual style of the game, we initially started with rectangles, kind of a prototype, like a lot of games do. A lot of games start with kind of placeholder graphics. And as we went through, we started adding different things, trying different ideas, seeing what we could do with it. And ultimately, every time we went forward and tried to do something different with rectangles, we lost something of the game. It lost a bit of its personality, or it became harder to understand kind of how the mechanics were working. So over time, we actually found the simple approach was the right way to go with this. And it was kind of a weird choice and one that could have gone very badly, but fortunately people kind of accepted it. But yeah, that was the, that was the process behind the visuals. Thomas Was Alone is, is played as these multiple characters. You can flip between them and they have different jump heights, different abilities in different cases. And we've built levels around that. And that's really why we stuck to this kind of rectangle look because ultimately you need to be able to read the space really easily, understand how things work. As you play the game, get an intuitive sense of what you can do. And also there's something very satisfying about the way everything clicks together. So this is a good example here. These little notches that you kind of only fit one character into. It's very satisfying moving in and kind of clicking into place and you know you're doing the right thing and so much of game design and level design it's just kind of showing the player that they're not doing something stupid and making them feel comfortable. The goal here wasn't to make something that was kind of super difficult or frustrating to the player it was to make something that they could have fun learning. Now you need failure to do that you need to make it that I can make this character fall to their death but actually we're not trying to punish people we're not trying to make people feel bad playing the game. I'd say in Thomas Was Alone, I think there's maybe three or four levels where we really kind of put you in a stressful situation. Most of the time, we, we actively work against that. Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. We actually arrived at the music quite early. I'd, I realised it had to have music of some kind. But to be honest, I was you know, working on my own, didn't really know any composers. I got really lucky that a friend of mine had actually uh, done a gig with another guy called David Halston, who'd mentioned that he wanted to do video game music. So I looked at that guy's portfolio, that guy's showreel, and it wasn't very good. I actually <laughs> genuinely didn't like much of David's stuff. And he knows this, it's fine. Um, but uh, so I told him that, and I told him, like, I'm not completely sure you're right for this. So he took some video footage of the game, and he wrote a piece of music specifically for it. And actually, if you play the game, it's now the main menu music. And it was just beautiful and moving, and made this little game about rectangles actually feel like it had some depth. That's the point where we started collaborating on the soundtrack. But to be honest with David, he's so good that honestly I just had to stay out of his way. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. People tend to assume that the voiceover was something I did from day one. Actually, it was quite a late decision. The original version of the game had uh, motion typography, so just text that would build up as you went through the levels. And that seemed pretty cool, but the problem with it was I realised I was shaping the levels to fit the text, or I was rewriting things to make them less interesting so they laid out better in the level. And it wasn't really working from either direction, so voiceover actually was kind of the easy option. I started writing that voiceover and trying to find a voice for the game in a style. I zeroed in on this kind of Douglas Adams meets Danny Wallace approach and then really struggled when I tried to find a voice actor because it turns out no one can do a Danny Wallace impression. Um, <laughs> and then I think just one evening on Twitter, I, um, I got drunk and DM'd him. Um, <laughs> just hassled him on the internet. 
he was up for it. He's a gamer, so he was interested. He actually used to like review video games and stuff, so it was something that he always kind of fancied doing. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. And yeah, he brought such a great performance to it. I've seen him say in interviews since, like, he is the best Danny Wallace impersonator in the world. It was at that moment that Claire realised she had superpowers. The idea of the story and kind of these characters actually kind of happened because of the internet. It happened because I put up an initial prototype and it was just rectangles jumping around. Um, but at the last minute, my friend Daz, again, actually he's responsible for a lot of the good choices in this game. Um, he, he was like, you need to give it a name that's a bit pretentious, uh, that will get the websites talking about it. So he said, you know, call it something kind of emo, like Ben was feeling a bit rubbish. And I worked on that, I finessed that, and it was Thomas Was Alone. But there was no story in there at all. It was just a name to make it look a bit more, more interesting. But what happened was in the comments under this kind of flash prototype we'd made were just people talking about Thomas. And they decided that the first rectangle they saw in the game was called Thomas. And then they made up other names for other characters or had decided that this character was fat or this character was skinny. They were just rectangles, but it kind of highlighted that actually people did want to kind of personify these characters. So at the point where we started making it into a real game, that kind of grew in tandem with the mechanics. So a character like Claire, for example, in the game, she's the only character who can float in water. So we thought about that and we thought about, okay, well, water, so blue maybe. She's kind of a compassionate character. She can help people. What would a character who was the only character in our world who could float in water think? Maybe they think they're a superhero. And maybe they'd be wrong about that. And maybe there's humor and comedy in the idea of a character who's coming to terms with the importance she has. Um, but kind of also a bit nerdy about it and a bit unsure. Fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. So the characters kind of grew out of what their mechanics were. I think that's why everything kind of links up in the way it does. And then in terms of names, some of them are jokes. I really didn't like a guy called John when I was younger, so he is in the game. And some of them are based on friends. Chris is definitely my friend Daz. So it's this evolving thing that happened as we were making the game. And as mechanics became interesting, the characters kind of grew out of that. With Thomas Was Alone, we had an enormous number of mechanics. We knew that, that we had all the different characters. We also had a lot of environmental stuff like water, moving platforms, various kind of gameplay outcomes that we knew the player was going to have to interact with and get on with. What that meant was that we had to build the levels to slowly introduce mechanics and get you to perfect them. The classic example of this actually is the first level of Mario where you move from left to right on the screen, then you get a situation where you uh, have to jump, but there's no danger. Then you get a situation where you have to jump and you can fail, but then you can also kind of come back from that. And then finally, a situation where you have to jump and if you fail at it, you will die. That's how we've kind of approached this. So on a meta level, when you're designing a game like Thomas Was Alone, for me, it was just a case of laying out a bunch of post-it notes uh, and working out, okay, this mechanic, I'm gonna introduce it here in the game, um, and by this point in the game, I want the player to have like, been challenged by it and then working out the sequence through different levels where that would happen. And eventually what you have is a bunch of overlapping curves of different things being introduced and different gameplay moments kind of working out. And then you get to the point where you actually build that. Once you've got an awareness of, okay, so level 47 of the game, I want the player to learn how to switch between being on a flotation character and alternating jumping over a block in order to survive through a level. Once you've got that on a piece of paper, it's just a case of kind of putting that together. And then it comes down to uh, lots of different ways of developing a game. Lots of people would use a grid-based structure, so you kind of lay out tiles. With this, I knew I wanted it to feel a bit more freeform. Uh, so in my case, actually, what I made was a bunch of uh, different size rectangles that were the fun way something can jump. So, for example, the jump distance of this character, I had a rectangle that I knew was a satisfying sideways jump for that character. I also had a rectangle that I knew was a fun up, you know, upwards jump. By doing that, I could kind of measure out levels and make levels feel satisfying for each character, and also make things like jumps that a certain character could make but other characters couldn't in a way that was consistent. <laughs> Thomas Was Alone took, from the moment I started, about three and a half years, which is a long time. I was teaching myself how to program. I'd never programmed a game before. And also I was working around a day job. So I was working 
you know, maybe an hour a night, most weeknights, and then maybe one day out of each weekend. So it was more of a hobby project. I guess if I'd been building it back then as a full-time uh, task, maybe I would have ended up taking a year and a half, maybe two years. I think now I could probably make it significantly faster, but that's what happens when you, when you get better and when you build a team that can make awesome stuff. So Thomas Was Alone actually was kind of a flop. <laughs> it launched and no one really cared. It sold a very small number of copies. Uh, we'd always planned that we were going to get like, you know, everyone who worked on it was going to get a holiday, basically. That was the plan. We were kind of inching towards that. But then, just before Christmas, we went into a sale and the game kind of started to pick up. And I'd made myself a deal that I was going to quit my day job uh, once I had a year's salary in the bank. And I remember I actually stayed home on New Year's Eve and didn't go out because it was really close to ticking over. And it ticked over. I remember it being midnight. Probably I'm making that more beautiful and poetic than it was. But it literally ticked over and suddenly I realised I could actually go and make my own games. What was really weird was then the next day one of the big YouTubers did a video of the game and by the end of that week it had made the same amount of money again. So it was kind of, that was the, that was the week where I realised this was actually really going to take off. Chris wondered if Thomas was still alive somewhere. He wasn't going to go looking for him. But he did wonder, and, and that, that showed character. Probably. I think if Thomas Was Alone demonstrates one thing, uh, and demonstrates it really well, is it doesn't need to be massive. Whatever you're making, especially a first project, especially something, even, even something that isn't a first project but is early on, you don't need to make an epic open world GTA style game. You can make something small. This is a game about rectangles uh, and it did well and it set me and my friends up to make more games. There's no shame in working that way and you should absolutely allow yourself to make stuff that's small. Small and, small and good is so much better than big and never released. I think the really cool thing about any kind of recognition and BAFTA especially, it's just the knowledge that you made a thing. You know, often when, as a creative, you're obviously you're not making the thing necessarily to kind of get plaudits or get attention. It's more about you just have to make the thing because it's in you and you have to get it out there. Um, to have it actually acknowledged is the moment where you realize people actually played this, people actually cared about this. And the person who now gets to call himself a BAFTA winning actor is... Danny Wallace for Thomas Was Alone! The BAFTA awards are great because this is a lot of kind of pomp and circumstance, a lot of ceremony, which is cool. We showed up and Danny was up for the BAFTA for his performance, and obviously that was just fantastic, incredibly proud moment. This is amazing, but I mean, it's this is Mike Bithell's award, Mike Bithell, who I think is um, is a man who really kind of epitomises, you know, the UK kind of indie gaming scene. He made this game essentially on his own. To see someone who had who had come and done this stupid, silly little rectangle game win an amazingly important award for his profession was just fantastic.